Welcome back to Refit and Sail. My name's George Isted, the Silent Boat Butler. I am on yet another Contessa. You'll be surprised to hear that. But in this episode, we are going to be doing a lot of re-gel coating. So this is another mid-70s Contessa that has been baking in the sun. This one came from overseas. It has been baked in the sun quite badly. And so the gel coat on the deck is in quite poor condition and because I've got all the windows out for refurbishment I had a chat with the owner about what we should do or not do with the coach roof sides down here because they are so UV damaged and degraded and there are kind of three options when it comes to doing something like this the obvious option is to paint it so paint over the gel coat and give it a, uh, a paint finish which is not a bad option at all um, my only concern about repainting um, an area like this where you've got a real high wear area with people walking up and down moving anchors around moving other stuff around is that paint is very 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 thin so you can really easily scratch it mark it and do sort of things like that to it and then you're into touching up or respraying some of that painted area another option which has become more popular is to vinyl wrap um, but again vinyl is susceptible to damage in high wear areas even more susceptible than paint is so i didn't really like the idea of vinyl wrapping the coach roof sides although again it is an option um, the third option is to re-gel coat the coach roof sides well the benefit of re-gel coating is that you end up with much much more material on the coach roof sides so if you put a little scratch scratch in a little dink or or whatever more often than not you can get some wet and dry paper you can kind of sand it out buff it out and then you'll never see it again because you've got the material there so having discussed the options with the owner he's gone okay that's great we'll go for the re-gel coat option it is more work because you have to apply the gel coat after doing a, a, a bunch of prep and then there's lots of sanding and then polishing to get it back to that perfect surface but you end up with effectively a factory finish as it was when it came out of the factory nearly 50 years ago so that is what we're going to be doing over the next few days so one of the joys of recording videos in a boatyard is lots of things come up and down here and it's a gravel boatyard which makes a load of noise and there's also just to add into the mix a train line just over there and i've recorded this for i think four times now to um, try and get a shot when i'm not being um, overspoken that's the wrong word but you know what i mean not having a load of background noise but anyway here is the gel coat that we are going to be redoing you can see the windows are out the old holes have all been filled around here and um, this has been sanded so you've got the non-slip which goes up to there then the blue carries on a little bit longer but you can see how damaged it is that's not sanding damage that's just where the gel has gone really really thin then we've got the white and then a bit more blue which is non which isn't non-slip and then we've got the non-slip so what we are going to do because the gel coat is damaged all the way up to the non-slip and ultimately we're going to be painting the non-slip as well is we're going to gel between the non-slip there and the non-slip there even though it covers up the blue so we're not going to have exactly the same uh, 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 start and finish point of the white gel coat as was original on the boat but it gives me a line to work to and then when it comes to doing the non-slip it will butt up against the gel coat now I'm partly making this video because I want to show all my viewers how to do this but I'm also partly doing this because I have a new assistant that is holding the camera um, his name's Boyd and I'm also showing him how to um, do this sort of work for me because I've got other boats that need similar tit titivation um, so it's going to be a learning experience for you and also the man behind Behind the camera now he's been busy over the last couple of days preparing the boat um, under my supervision so this has all been abraded here with 80 grit to um, clean the surface uh, highlight any issues um, we've found a number of little voids and bits and pieces that we've then filled uh, and sanded back and all this now needs because it's nicely abraded is a good clean and wipe down with acetone so that's the first thing we're going to do uh, once that's all done, I'm going to mask everything up. So I'm going to mask up along the edge of the non-slip and then I can catalyze some gel coat. I'm using absolutely bog standard um, gel coat. I've got a white, which is a slightly off white. It will be slightly brighter than this, but it's not a super, super bright white um, uh, gel coat. I'm going to be applying the first coat with a brush, just brushing on, letting that set up 
um, that will leave a tacky finish. I can then come in and put a second, a third and a fourth coat on. Now, each time I put a coat of gel coat on, I'm going to take off and then re-mask up because when the gel goes off, it will stick any masking tape to the boat, which is not ideal because it's much, much thicker than paint. So you do have to re-mask every time, which is a bit of a pain. Um, but if you're reasonably quick at masking, which I am because I do so much of it, it's not the end of the world. So um, that's going to end up having four coats is the plan of gel coat on here. Uh, the fourth coat, I'm going to put some wax in styrene into that mix and that wax will come to the surface when it cures and it will stop the surface from being tacky on that final fourth coat. Now, I don't need to do that. I could just leave it with a tacky surface and then clean off the, the, the tacky uncured um, gel coat on the surface with acetone or something like that, but um, uh, it makes it slightly easier and it's slightly quicker if I can get that final layer of gel coat to finish to a non-tacky finish. So effectively, I'm gonna turn that fourth coat into a flow coat rather than a, a gel coat, if that makes sense. Right, so I need to do a bit less talking and get this man to do some work. And uh, the first job is to give this all a really good clean with acetone, just because you know, we have grease on our fingers, it needs to be absolutely perfectly clean, and then we can come in and mask up. So first job, as I said, is to give this a wipe down with acetone. So I buy big containers of this stuff and then decant it into small ones just because I get through so much of it and it just needs a really good clean all over and I will probably do this twice. And I clean beyond where I'm going to be um, gel coating, not just the bit that I'm gonna be doing. So it gives a really, really good clean all over and you can see the kind of dirt that's coming off on here is actually a little bit of green as well which I've probably picked up off of the non-slip. The other thing that's really handy when you're doing a job like this is a kneeling mat which is on Lottie next door so um, I'm going to go and grab that in a bit but this needs a really good clean You'll see round the front here, there's some yellow tape and I put that on to show Boyd where I wanted him to sand to because the non-slip area here, if you know Contessa's, you know it stops just there and I need to be able to gel coat up to something. I need to uh, you know, bring a line in um, to work to. So I put a bit of fine line tape all the way around there so we could sand up to that. Um, that's now been somewhat sanded so I need to take it off and replace it. But um, Again, we're going to be gel coating up to this yellow line and I've just put a curve in here to kind of replicate the curve that was there but bringing it a little bit higher. Haven't yet decided what we're doing about all this but um, this hasn't been sanded. This is where the gel coat is just, you know, disappeared, UV degraded over the years. I'm guessing when it was laid up in the boat, in the mould, it probably wasn't applied very thickly just over this kind of radius inside the mould so that's why it's gone through there, but it's not gone through there. Um, but I need to have a conversation with the owner exactly what we are going to do. It might be that I end up having to re-gel coat all of this as well up to the non-slip, but that is a conversation for another day. For now, I just want to get the, get the white done. So, because there's no point in having a dog and barking yourself, I'm now going to hand this over to my friendly assistant who can come in and give this all a really good clean. So looking down here, I have just applied fresh, what I call my fine line tape around there. You have to use this thin stuff because of the curve that you need to kind of make on the corners. And now I'm going to go around the rest of it just with normal bog standard masking tape. Now the good news is the weather is unseasonably lovely at the moment. Here in... Uh, Hampshire on the River Hamble it is absolutely stunning for the next few days, so it's perfect weather for getting this gel coat on. Well, that's it all masked up all the way round. I've got Boyd having a 
say hello Boyd. Boyd's just having a final hoover around because there's little bits of dust and dirt and what have you that we don't want blowing around and going into the gel coat is the other side so I'm just doing this forward section to start with so um, the front four windows go in here so I'm going to go and do that all the way around on both sides and then once that is done I'll move on to sections that take us back to the stern of the boat. This is the gel coat I've got four of these I think five kilo containers which should be absolutely loads but it was cheaper to buy it in a larger quantity than buy smaller quantities and then find you don't quite have enough. Um, I've given it a shake because that's quite important and I now need to give it a bit of a stir so I'm gonna chuck some gloves on. You can never have too many gloves and there's another tip for you is if you think it's likely that you're going to be changing your gloves, double glove because your hands get sweaty in these gloves and if you need to take one off and then put another one on you can't because your hands have gone all sweaty so if you double glove you can whip off the outside glove and then stick another one on without having lots of swearing because your blow coat or your gel coat or your epoxy or whatever you're using is going off and you're just trying to get your gloves on so um, double glove saves a bit of swearing quite often. Right, I don't have a long mixing stick so I've just found this piece of wood which should do the job. Try not to get the gel coat all over the boat. And I've already dropped a little bit of dirt in it somehow. So I'll just fish that out. So it's always worth giving your gel coat a really good stir as well as a shake. Particularly if it's flow coat rather than gel coat because the wax likes to separate out. And so you need to give it a good stir to get it all consolidated and mixed again. As you can see, this isn't the brightest of whites. I don't know how well it shows up on the uh, screen that you're watching this on, but it's just kind of like an off-white. Um, the first one of these that I re-gel coated on the coach roof, I did with a very bright white and it actually, as much as it looked lovely, it kind of stood out as that's very obviously brand new gel coat. Um, and so by going for a very slightly off-white, I think it will blend in with the fact that, you know, this is a 50-year-old boat and it won't stand out so much. It will just look like a boat that's in really nice condition as opposed to a boat that's been massively restored. The other thing that's worth doing is I've got my brushes out. I'm going to be using two-inch brushes. Um, and it's always, I've already done this to be fair off camera, but I always give them a really good kind of shake out if there's any loose bristles in there you want them falling out now not falling out when you're in the middle of coating so just giving it a good kind of rub around like that makes the chance of you getting bristles in your coating far less likely so that should be all good I'm going to grab some tissue Or I could probably about half fill this, so that's going to be about 600 mils, 700 mils, something like that. In fact, I might even go 800, there we go, and then I know I've definitely got enough. And then for this first coat, I know I'm going to definitely have enough, and whatever I've got left over, I will know how much I need to pour out for the second coat. But I don't really want to be coming back and having to get more out mid coating. Right, let's get the lid back on that. Because flies love this stuff. Don't know if it's the smell or what, but they love jumping in and having a bath in gel coat. Right, this did have some acetone on it, so 
if you ever drop something, it's worth cleaning it up straight away so you don't get it on yourself and then immediately start transferring it around everything you're touching. All right, now I'm gonna over catalyze this slightly. Uh, not too worried about that, I think that'd be okay. Um, I'm gonna over catalyze this slightly. Uh, normally you'd go kind of one, one and a half percent, something like that. I'm gonna go probably two to two and a half percent because I want it to cure fairly quickly so I can get on and put the second, third and fourth coats on. Um, it's quite a warm day, so we'll see how quickly it lasts. Um, if I've over catalyzed it, it's not the end of the world. I can always mix up some more. Um, I've got loads. So I've got 800 mils in there. So if I fill that all the way up to 15, pull that in. Not a couple. give that a really good stir in. It's definitely over catalyzed but for today and just getting this gel coat on quickly that's absolutely fine. It just means it's going to go off a little bit quicker. Remember if you're playing with epoxy rather than polyester you cannot over or under catalyze it because it is an entirely different substance that you're working with it doesn't work in the same way as polyester with polyester the more catalyst you put in the faster it goes off with epoxy it's a two-part product so it is absolutely critical that we follow the manufacturer's mixing instructions whether it's two to one three to one five to one whatever it is because the two components that you're mixing combine at the chemical level at the kind of, I don't want to say molecular level, but that the, um, yeah, it probably is at the molecular level. Anyway, follow the manufacturer's instructions if you're using polyester, uh, using epoxy, whereas polyester you can under and over catalyze depending on what you're trying to do with it and the temperature that you're working in. And as the day goes on and warms up today, I'm probably gonna put less catalyst into the second, third and fourth coats. So normally I would start at one end and work all the way around here, but because I'm trying to film it and Boyd's holding the camera, um, it's really quite difficult to have him moving whilst I do it. So I'm gonna start on this corner and work down this side, and then I'll work back down the other side just for your entertainment pleasure. So I'm gonna get a nice big dollop on my brush and you literally just applying it by brush fairly thickly don't want to worry too much about brush strokes because when it goes on initially the brush strokes do kind of flow out a little bit I generally start at the top so if I drop anything it's dropping down onto something that is going to get coated make sure I just go over the masking tape I'm just going to work around like this until I have a nice coating over and there's something blowing around in the breeze there so I'll get rid of that before it gets stuck in my gel coat. There we go, that is the first coat on. I'm gonna go and make a cup of tea now. I'll let that set up, hopefully I'll be able to come back and put a second coat on in the not too distant future. It's very difficult to tell sometimes exactly how fast it's gonna go off because it is dependent on temperature, dependent on how much catalyst you put in, but hopefully half an hour, three quarters of an hour, that'll be firm enough I can come and put a second coat on once I've masked up again. This first coat of gel coat has now cured after our nice cup of tea. So I've just 
masked it all up again, I'm going to mix up the second coat of gel coat so I can put that on. It has got, or it did have, um, the odd little bit of speck of dust and other debris in it, but that was really easy to clean up, so I just got some um, tissue with some acetone on it, and it's just stuck to the very sticky surface that's left. And I'm just sort of giving it a quick wipe with a very wet acetone rag, and it's just taken all those little bits off, so I can come back in now, put the second coat on, and then uh, maybe have some lunch. very much the same as the earlier video that I took but I have now applied five coats of gel coat to this front section. This is maybe a better look so I uh, saved you the boredom of watching me apply five coats of gel coat but uh, I did it exactly the same way as the first one so um, masked up, applied, demasked, went away, made a cup of tea or did something else for half an hour, came back masked up again and repeated. The only difference is on the very last coat I added wax styrene to the gel coat to effectively make it flow coat so that it will cure to a non-tacky finish. And now I'm going to leave that because it's 6 p.m. now. I'm going to leave that for a few hours and I'll come back up and maybe put some covers over those window holes just in case it rains, although it's not forecast to rain. And uh, the sanding and refinishing can commence. A couple of days have passed, but I am back on the boat and this gel coat has really gone off obviously very, very hard. And that last coat with the wax in it, which makes it effectively flow coat, has um, cured. So I don't have a sticky finish that I need to deal with. So um, this is um, ready to be sanded. So I've just got all the bits and pieces out that I need to start doing some sanding. I'm not going to show you the whole boat being done because there is an awful lot of sanding to be done and there is only so much internet to go around. But I thought I'd do this section just at the front here to show you how I go about finishing this gel coat. So I've got a few tools out, which I'm going to show you. So this is uh, the first thing I'm going to be using an awful lot of. It is made by Merkur. I'm sure there are similar things made by other people. It's just a flat sanding pad, Velcro on the back of it, and it has extraction on it as well. So it's plumbed into my Hoover. So this is going to produce an awful lot of dust. And the more I can get up the hoover, the less is going to be floating around in the atmosphere in the boatyard. So that is a useful tool, but obviously it can't be used when there's any curves or even a slight curve. So it should be fine for sort of the bulk of this. But when it comes to the edges, I'm going to move on to using these kind of flexi pad, flexi sanding um, things. So uh, you can get these sort of jobs. This is actually a brand new one and uh, you can see it's kind of squishy. So it works well when there's a slight contour you want to work to. Uh, and then when there's a very tight contour, um, not so much there, but right at the bottom here, if I can bring you down a touch, it's quite a contour in there. That is going to end up being done by hand. So um, uh, that is just the nature of the job. Sometimes you can't use a tool, you just got to hand sand it. So, I'm going to um, start by knocking it down with some fairly coarse paper. Uh, I think I've got some 120 here, hopefully, yes. Um, I could almost start with 80, but um, I'll probably start with 120 and see how I go. And uh, so that I know that I haven't gone too far, I'm going to use some marker pen, a Sharpie pen, permanent marker, and some acetone. And uh, I'm effectively going to use this as a guide coat. So if I do this all over here, like that, and then I get some tissue and some acetone. To be fair, the darker the colour, the better. And I really should mask up around here because I don't want to um, get it on the bits that aren't being sanded. I'll do that in a minute. But just for the sake of demonstration, 
I also should have gloves on because acetone's horrible stuff. But probably could do with a bit more pen on this and a darker colour pen. I'll go and get one in a minute. But the point is that green gets into the surface. And when it comes to sanding, I'm removing all that green pen until such time as there isn't any left, which means I've sanded it back to a flat surface using the 120 grit. And then I'll do it again with some 240, and then I'll do it again with some 400, and that'll be all the dry sanding done, and then I'm gonna move on to wet sanding, and I'll go through the grades of wet sanding this, so 600, 800, 1000 grit, 1200 grit, 1500 grit, until I have a beautiful flat surface that is ready to be polished with the uh, machine polisher, which I need to go and get because it's in my workshop. So without further ado, I'm gonna put some masking tape up around this, set up a time-lapse, and you can see sanding in uh, time-lapse mode, as in fast, because um, I can assure you this is gonna be long and tedious. That's the first bit of sanding all done so I've removed all the green so I've removed all the low spots I've got a fairly flat surface now it was mostly done with 120 there was a little bit of 240 around the edges and on the kind of corners like here um, just because it made it less likely that I'd burn through the gel that I'd put on down to the original gel coat so what I might actually do is jump straight to 400 grit on that once I've covered it all in the guy coat again and see how that goes. I'm hoping I can miss out the 240 step, even if it does mean a little bit more sanding to get it down to 400. different but that's it now sanded to 400 grit probably looks no different at all to what I showed you a minute ago you just have to take my word for it it's um quite difficult with the green pen I need to find some black really um, particularly because this is kind of not in silhouette but the Sun isn't shining directly on it so it's quite hard to see where the green is at times in the fine little scratches that we're trying to remove but anyway it's done now so I'm going to go and grab some wet and dry paper and start going through the grades of six, eight, thousand, twelve hundred onwards. So uh, I'll be back in a tick.
have seen, this has been wet sanded within an inch of its life, so I've gone all the way up to 2,000 grit in the end, because I managed to find some. I don't normally have 2,000 kicking around, but I did, so I thought I'd give it a quick, um, a quick sand up with some uh, 2,000. So the next step, or the final step, is to give it a polish with my big polishing mop. And uh, that should give us some nice, factory fresh, beautiful gel coat. And, uh, and that is this bit of the job done. I've just got the rest of the boat to do. So, you know, just a little bit of work. Um, but I think I'm gonna crack on and see what this looks like. glossy not too bad at all the sunshine is kind of going away now so it doesn't really shine as much as I would like but you get the idea if I get down low enough you can see a nice reflection in that now I've shown you how to do it I've got Boyd coming in tomorrow and he can start sanding the sides I'll do his a lesson in the morning and then there's an awful lot more gel coating to do to get this one all finished, but it will eventually all look kind of like that. Well folks, I have just finished all the gel coating, so it's had five coats of gel coat all the way around the boat now on that coach roof side, which goes all the way around the back of the cockpit, so there's just an awful lot of sanding to do now, which Boyd has started, I've done a bit as well, and we will continue tomorrow. But before I bring the video to an end, because I'm not going to cover the whole process, there was a few tips and tricks that I wanted to bring along. Now the first thing is, before you start a project like this, you need to be aware of how much time and effort it is actually going to take to refinish a gel coat um, finish on your boat, whether it's the coach roof or the hull or the cockpit or whatever it is. And the best piece of advice I can give to you is maybe go and buy yourself or go and grab out of your spare bits of wood box a square or whatever of plywood, which is maybe one and a half, two foot square, and then go and buy yourself a small pot of gel coats. So you probably only need about a kilo, something like that. Paint on five coats of gel coat as though you were doing your boat, just onto the plywood, let it all cure up, and then do all the prep, the sanding, the polishing to get that back to the sort of finish that you're happy with on your actual boat. And that will give you a really good flavor of how long it is going to take. And also it gives you the opportunity to practice with the tools before you actually go and do it on your pride and joy. So that's the first thing I'd really want to emphasize. It's well worth practicing. It's well worth getting those skills really up together rather than practicing on your boat practice on some scrap plywood the um, gel coat itself is really really inexpensive it won't cost more than a few pounds or a few dollars just to buy a small um, amount of gel coat and then you can crack on have a play and away you go so the next thing is i talked about when i was doing the work um, in the video earlier on about the fact that I put wax into wax in styrene into the gel coat for that last layer and that stops it from having that tacky finish on the end it effectively turns the gel coat into flow coat so that is one way of doing it it's my preferred way of doing it another option which I didn't mention is to use PVA so you can buy PVA and you can apply the PVA to the final layer just after it's been all applied you just very gently sort of brush it on with a very soft brush without disturbing the gel coat and again that seals the surface and allows the gel coat to cure completely now the reason I don't always use PVA although I do sometimes in some applications is you have to clean that PVA off 
afterwards. It just washes off with water, so it's not a great deal of effort, but it kind of can leave a bit of a sticky residue itself unless you completely wash it all away. So I tend not to use it that much, but occasionally it's kind of handy just to um, put a bit of PVA over the top of something. So the other thing that's worth using is I mentioned that I clean everything down with acetone. I do also sometimes use panel wipe. So um, panel wipe from an auto refinishing shop um, is used in the auto refinishing industry. It's good for removing wax, grease, dirt and what have you. If I'm using panel wipe, I'll use panel wipe first and then I'll use acetone afterwards. And I always give it a really good clean with acetone always, always, always before I do any gel coating. So at least two goes around with acetone, but going around with panel wipe first is not a bad idea because that um, is generally made out of um, isopropanol alcohol, um, which is really good at removing all sorts of stains and dirt and what have you. And it doesn't flash off quite as quick as acetone. So it's a much better in many ways um, cleaning agent, but it's not as aggressive as acetone. Um, so panel wipe first is not a bad idea or just do it with acetone. So the last tip I'll give if you're going to be painting your gel coat on, it's very tempting to brush it always in the vertical or brush it always in the horizontal. Um, the problem with doing it in the same direction every time is the brush strokes that you put in on one layer, you'll only add to on the next layer. So if you can remember to do it, do brush strokes in one direction on the first layer and then do brush strokes or finish it off with brush strokes in the other direction in the other layer and the two kind of fill each other and by the time you've got to five layers you know that you've filled any brush strokes that might have been there from the first second third coats that you have put on. Hope you enjoyed the video. There was a lot of comments and questions off the back of one of my Instagram posts about how I'd refinish some gel coat on the boat there. So a number of people were saying, I hope there's gonna be a video about this. Well, here it is. Thank you very much for watching. If you want to support the show, there is a link down in the description. If you want to buy me a beer to say thank you or buy me multiple beers, that's always very welcome as well. Any money that I get in tends to go back into producing the content. So buying equipment, buying lighting, buying microphones, this sort of fluffy thing up here. Um, lighting, microphones, I want to buy a better camera at some point. So um, it does buy beer, but it also buys stuff that helps me produce better videos. If you have donated, I really, really do appreciate it. Thank you very, very much. And uh, I will see you next time. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.